there. Welcome to Partial Nudity. I'm your host, Sadie Katz, and we are about to get down and dirty about the naked truth about going on Let's Make a Deal, uh, or more or less being a game show contestant. I happen to have firsthand information. I've got the naked truth because back in December, when we were still coveting, I, I guess we're, we're still coveting, especially in um, Los Angeles, where I think we're always going to be coveting, but that's another story. I got the chance to audition to be on Let's Make a Deal. Now, I'm really grateful for being on this show. It was really fun. I, I dressed as like a 1950s prom queen. So I got my hair and makeup done. It looked fantastic. I had this amazing pink dress. Um, so here's the one thing is normally if you have watched the show, let's make a deal. You typically, there's a huge studio audience of like 250 people and no one knows that they're going to be on the show. And the biggest thing is when their name gets called, they have to come on down. So there's a lot of like excitement in the audience. Well, COVID kind of changed all of that because obviously you don't want to big like audience group with um, mask on because that ruins the whole idea of the costume and you want a bunch of dopey smiles um which i'm i do very well <laughs> i'm so sorry why do i choose to embarrass myself all the time i don't know um maybe i don't know any better and i have this like view that i'm gonna be like really cool and people <laughs> and instead i see myself and i'm just like oh dear god I mean, maybe it's like that with these podcasts. Who knows? I'm going to live in my land of delusion. So anyway, because of COVID, they now just have like 10 pods, literal pods on stage. So if you haven't seen it in a long time and you kind, you already know that you're going to get picked for the show and you stay on stage the entire length of the show when other people are playing and, you know, you're kind of giving that enthusiasm so that an audience of 200 people or more, you have to give with like these 10 pots. I've seen in another video where I talked about being a Jehovah's Witness. We could not go to prom or any school dances as a Jehovah's Witness. So I am like the ridiculous person where every Halloween, I want to be the prom queen, any party. I'm like, let's do a prom party. Um, so of course I wanted to be a prom queen. You also can't wear costumes that are bloody. It's a family show. You can't wear licensed costumes. A lot of people do homemade costumes, which are very clever. I'm, I'm not like that crafty and I really didn't think of anything super clever. I did watch a bunch of episodes and kind of knew like when I auditioned, to say they, they want to see your face. So you can't even wear like a hat too big unless you can pull it back. Cause this show is like, honestly, the games are not difficult. And so it's all about the prizes, uh, Wayne being like this really funny host and people being really, really, really excited. Um, which I naturally can be really, really excited about everything. So when we got there the day of, first of all, we've been in quarantine. So like, this was the first like group event. I think it was the first thing I filmed one day during quarantine. So we're talking about like not filming for seven months. So just being on a set is cool. Now here, here's my naked truth. So when I auditioned, I was like, Oh, they probably won't pick me because I'm an actress and they won't want like a very well-known actress. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I think so highly of myself. Apparently that didn't really matter to them. <laughs> so yeah, they picked me, which is cool. But so you show up and uh, it's, they kind of have you all separated, but everyone's super excited, partly because everyone they picked is kind of a nerd like me. Like, obviously they picked us because we're really enthusiastic people who, you know, are willing to turn on the cheese. Like they kept saying to us, look, we need you 10 contestants to, I think it's 10, 10 or 12. I don't know, uh, to fill the space of over 200 contestants. So, I mean, when you haven't been like even moving off your couch that much, it, 
like this morning was filled with a lot of adrenaline because they, you go there, they check you in and then you're in like a little pot, like a changing room type stall and they're lined up. So it's like, you know, 10 of these stalls and there's a contestant in each one and everyone gets their badge, which uh, I, I can't remember where I put my badge. It's kind of like the coolest thing. I, I know I had to put it in the memory box. You know, they write your name on it. And it's just a sticker badge, but it's, it's iconic from like, how long has the show been on? A long fucking time. <laughs> I, I love my research I did on this, but I mean, I think it's been on like 30 years. So um, it, it's kind of, to me, I was like, wow, this is like a bucket list thing when people, I, I love to have lots of ridiculous things to say that I'm I'm like, yeah, I did that. That was a great thing. Um, you know, when you're dead, you run a lot of stories before you're dead. Like the pre-show prepper or producer comes out and they're getting us like the music's playing and it's like some 90s music, which is really funny. It's, um, I don't know. It was like, like, you can't touch this. No, 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 You know, I uh, can't touch this. I think the second I showed up to the studio, to the lot, once they checked me in, I probably cheered and screamed for about two hours. We had an hour prep. Like they do these things like that. We had an hour prep. So it was like cheer, cheer, cheer. They were getting us more excited. So as excited as you thought that you should be, you know, if you're like, woo, and that turns into like jumping up and down. Like you're, you're really seconds away from a car wheel. <laughs> Like, I don't remember the last time. I don't even remember in my life. Like, I'm a pretty enthusiastic person, but like jumping up and down. Do you hear my cat in the background? That's hilarious. Ooh, calm down, pussy. Um, so like jumping up and down and being ridiculous actually feels really good for um for, I don't know, for, for your soul. Um, so we did that, they prepped and then they bring us out. So we had to do like, what was weird is it's like the whole mask thing. Um, you have the <laughs> my cat sounds like she's saying hello. Um, <laughs> she wants to be a star. Uh, so I finally get picked. Now there's all these crazy rules and here's the really funny thing. Unless I, you know, unless I'm watching the show or I just watched the show, I couldn't remember for the life of me what game I I played. Nothing. And I think some of it is it does go by really fast. They said that, but I was like, well, I'm an actress. Like I'll kind of remember more. It won't be that exciting. I lied. It was so exciting because <laughs> the second you get in there, you see the set and it's really familiar to you. It's the same thing you always think. Anytime you go on a TV set, it's always so much smaller than you pictured. Um, the girl who's the host, who I should like know her name, is truly stunning. And the dress she was wearing was like this emerald green dress that actually I saw on Rent the Runway. Tip for you ladies. Um, it's a clothing rental service that's amazing. Anyway, it called, they give you this like little spiel. Who are you? And they, you know, they know some details about you from your interview. And so they already know either they're going to say, the person's going to say, oh, I'm Ben and I'm a karaoke singer. And then Wayne will say, well, you know, you want to sing a couple lines for us? Or someone says they're a Fruit Loop dancer or they, you know, whatever, whatever it is, or they'll ask you like what your job is and what you like about it. And it's normally something really enthusiastic, like, Hey, I heard that you love to dance. Can you show us your moves? So it's very silly like that. I couldn't mention that I was an actress, but I could mention that I was a writer or I could mention I was an actress, but they kind of like, they can't have everyone say that. And it's kind of boring. Um, so I was, a, I'm a writer and one of my craziest jobs that I've had or silliest is I was a window store mannequin, which I, I don't know how to describe it any other way, except I stood, this was my job. I made $15 an hour. I got it through my modeling agency when I was like 17 and they, they hooked me up to go to Chico's. It was like Chico's dresses. Do you remember that? It was like a middle-aged clothing store that sold like a lot of animal print and khakis. So basically I got this job where I would 
go in, dress up in their clothes, which, you know, I'm 17, I'm really thin and their clothes are made for like a 45 year old woman. Great. So I, I have the clothes on and then they give me these glasses and I put extra lotion on and then I stand at the mall in the window. I have, listen, I've had no shame forever. Okay. <laughs> I, no embarrassment. Now I look back and I'm like, that's so cringy, but $15, you know, a while ago was, a uh, pretty good pay. It was like three times minimum wage, maybe more. Yeah. About three times the minimum wage I'm dating myself. So, um, yeah, that was like a job I had. I'd stand there and then people at the mall who are absolutely ridiculous people would be like, walk by and go, Oh, is is that real? There's, I, I don't know how everyone didn't assume and I would stay really still. And then like, you know, And then move and everyone would start giggling, laughing. That probably wasn't my best pose because you couldn't use your face, but you would, you know. So that's what Wayne Brady asked me. So I get called. Now, my first concern is I've got this really big dress on and like everyone else and I'm a klutz. I'm like, please don't trip, Sadie. Like the floor, the carpet's a little slippery. And then I'm like, well, if I trip, it will probably go viral. So it's a win-win. I mean, look, we all say like, it doesn't matter to go viral, but yeah, it does. It's super fun. Even if they make fun of you, which I've, I've been made fun of virally. It's all, all press is still good press, you know, like screw them if they can't take a joke. Oh, another name for my memoir. Okay. So, uh, I go up, I, now there's one more white glove. I put on the white glove for the game, but before that Wayne comes out and I'll, I'll play that clip. And he says, Sadie, um, what do you do? And for some reason, my voice is already screechy, but I'm like, hi, I'm, I got to back up for, for you guys. I'm like, hi, my name's Sadie Katz. I'm from Orange County. (sighs) You know what? It was actually worse than that. Like you can watch a clip. So, uh, and then I'm like, he says, used to be a store window mannequin. So he wants me to strike a pose and I'm already having a little bit of like stomach, like I'm kind of nervous about that. But then, I mean, I'm like, I'm overthinking it. So I like, of course, jump into my pose. Uh, I do like one pose and another, and then he's, he says, what about sports? And I, uh, and then I, I can't think of anything. So I picture throwing a football. It's fine. Great. I'm a little bit of a cheese ball. And I also do this thing like I mean, I always have my hands like this and move back. These are things you don't do as an actor, like all these mannerisms you drop, but as me, they're out of control. Like I'm just way too twitchy. Uh, It's just how I've always been. I'm going to stick with it, I guess, in my real life, in my real life when I'm not on Let's Make a Deal. Uh, So then I put on the glove, I stick it in the box pull out some, you know, balls. The person had gone before me had pulled out balls. They added up to something and they could pick one gift, one gift or another. Um, I think they got zoinked. So if you don't know the game, zoinked, zoinked, Z-O-I-N-K, zoink. Um, they, if you, that's the fun thing is like, you can win a prize or you get to trade it in. So let's make a deal. And a lot of times there'll be like a giant box on stage. So it's really tempting. And that could be like, you know, uh, it could be, you know, motor scooters, or it could be a new living room set, furniture set, a lifetime supply of Cheetos, um, or it can be like a giant zoink, which you do not get to keep. Like sometimes it's like a barrel of hay or like bales of hay, tons of it. And you know, it's kind of a, uh, yeah, but you don't get to keep the zoink. So if it's like, you know, a giant sized stuffed pony that is not yours to keep, even though that would be dope. Um, just getting it would be fine. Uh, so yes, I get up, I do something with the balls. I have my glove in. (laughs) I'm always doing something with the balls. Um, so you pull it out and then I get to pick. There is a box on the stage and Wayne has an envelope. Now this is very tricky because I studied the past episodes and I'd seen that sometimes the, the envelope would be a zoink because you assume there's money in the envelope or like a trip. And then 
the box was small enough that they were going to lift up to show me my prize, but I figured it might be a trip like in there because that's like a trick, you know, I'll be tickets to Aruba, um, which would be really cool. Any excuse I can have to travel is cool. So after debating, and I have to tell you, I guessed through the whole game, everything that someone should have picked, like box A or box, box B. My, my supernatural, like psychic powers popped in. So I picked the box and I'm going to unbox what I won. There's also an embarrassing story that I, that I'm pretty apologetic about so they they didn't say you don't get to go home with your prize um on a slight occasion you do but really they send you the prize right when your show's airing because you have to sign a uh, waiver that you're not going to spill the beans on the show or say whether or not you won or that makes you uh, forfeit your prize so i got this in the mail now when i won on on the show i didn't get to get close to what i had won let's just see what i won first so i i'm not good at these unboxings but i'm i'm learning i think i have to do it like more very slowly um maybe the best part of this box is the fact that it's jumbo bubble wrap why does it give such satisfaction now i can't pop it all right, I'll do it another time. Bubble wrap is so much fun. That's going to be my nighttime activity. <laughs> so my box, I'm sharing the box with my box with the world. Um, won't be the first time. Okay, so inside, it's obviously a jewelry box. And hopefully I didn't jumble it too much. <sighs> Diamond earrings. Look at this. And they're from Concierge Diamonds and Fine Jewelry. Now, if you see them, these are pretty bitchin'. Now, for whatever reason, when I won these, these are they say that they uh that they're a seven thousand dollar value. And I'll tell you the rating on the diamonds in the middle, I think they're both a half carat uh G, which is pretty damn clear. And you could see that I was a little concerned with the way it's not, I I'm always like worried how I'm going to break something valuable because that's like, I'm classic with that breaking things that are valuable, uh, besides hearts. So yeah, it, but here's the embarrassing thing. This is maybe I'll, I'll say that I have a temper in weird circumstances and it's not even a temper. It's, it's more anxiety anxiety so sometimes when I'm anxious I don't always express myself as well as I could have <laughs> that, that's a nice way of saying I can be a real see you next Tuesday um on accident it, it, it's truly on accident most of the time um so when I saw these I couldn't remember what they look like because the show is such a rush. It really is. And you're jumping up and down. And I'm telling you, I went home and went to bed. I was exhausted. I think too, I, I don't know why I'm thinking this, that the call time was pretty early in the morning. So I was up at like, oh, I, I was getting my hair and makeup done. So I was up at like six or something, which is fine. But you know, you're not normally jumping up and down at 10 in the morning on that level with that much consistent energy. So I'm acting like I went in and did brain surgery. I, I realize how ridiculous it is. I'm just, I'm sharing this, this story with you and they're still accepting um, contestants and applicants and you should definitely go out, just act like a monkey. So uh, I, I go home now, here's the catch with these prizes are very pretty and they're surrounded i don't know if you could see but they're surrounded by diamonds and they're super clear diamonds they don't have any like yellow in them no tints and i mean to my naked eye i can't even see like my naked eye i can't even see like a flaw in the cut of these diamonds i mean it's a it's like a uh it's kind of an old english cut up here i think i don't know so I, i'm gonna guess something like that so I 
made a mistake. And when I left, I knew I won the diamonds, but when they said a $7,000 value, I, I almost was this close to getting to do like the big thing at the end. So the people who earn the most money are like the, who, you know, win the most prizes, uh, get to go up and, you know, compete for something crazy, like a car or something. So I was one person away from that. Um, that's okay. Cause I won diamonds and that was super cool. I felt relieved. I really didn't want to go home and say I hadn't won anything. I'm really competitive and, uh, with games. So I wanted to be able to say, like, I didn't want to tell people like, Hey, I went on, let's make a deal. And then when they go, Oh, did you win? Cause everyone asked the same thing. Did you win a car? And I wanted it to be like, no, but I won $7,000 diamonds, which is cool. Especially me, because I do believe that diamonds are a girl's best friend. They really are. There's something about chicks and diamonds, man. It's weird. I get like this feeling in my stomach about it. So, um, I go home and my biggest concern is when you win something on game shows, if you don't know this, you must pay the taxes on your winnings. This presents a problem because the taxes on your winnings are about 30%, 30, I think it's 34%. So that's crazy if you really think about it, because 34% on $7,000 is what it's, what did I find it to be like, let's just say it was 2,500 math isn't my strong suit amongst other things. Um, <laughs> neither is my pink suit. It's not very strong at all. Um, so, uh, yeah. So you're like, you're like, okay, I have these earrings and that's really cool, but now I have to pay the taxes on it. And I'm already picturing coming home to miles and saying, I won the earrings and then saying, I have the taxes and me saying, I'm going to pay for the taxes and something happening. And then him being stuck paying for them. Uh -uh. Um, the joys of being engaged to Sadie cats. So like, I'm nervous about it. And then I think, well, I guess I could sell the earrings, but I don't have the earrings and I haven't seen them. And also the idea of selling the earrings makes me sad too, but like, maybe I'll wear them a while and then sell them. But anyone who knows anything about diamonds knows that the resale value on diamonds is, or on any jewelry is no bueno. So I go home and I look up. So I wait a few days. I'm talking about the diamonds. I'm really excited. I get to, I only get to share with like people I know who won't repeat it. Like my, my aunt um, that I won and I swear them to secrecy and I can't even tell anyone I'm on the show. So for some reason, I'm posting pictures on Instagram of me and a tiara as a princess. And I'm like, everyone probably just thinks I'm a freaking asshole, but that's okay. Um, you know, uh, any excuse this is my this is my actual tiara I know you thought it was legit but it was just twenty dollars at the costume store so I look up on concierge diamonds dangling diamonds they sell engagement rings I, they got great Yelp reviews and I look them up and I see these other diamonds that look nothing like these. They're really like three things and they're actually older. They're not as cool as these, but I get in my head that those are the diamond earrings. I really do. So I'm like panicked, like, okay, I think I'll be able to sell those. Cause I don't want to not get the prize. It's like this stubborn thing of, I don't want to say to them, you're allowed to for so that's the thing you either take the prize and you agree um to paying the taxes because you're going to get you know sent the i guess it would be a w9 i don't know um as earnings maybe it's under something else i'm not sure uh so you know it, it's sort of like some people get a vacation and they're really broke and the vacation they say is worth twenty thousand dollars but the truth is the vacation isn't that's just what they say you know the vacation resort says it and then people are stuck with this huge bill that it's like you know 30 percent so you know you're talking like six thousand dollars in taxes and like you could get your own vacation for six thousand dollars so it's kind of a bummer in that way i think the only thing that you could win that this might make sense for is like a car, obviously. But even that, I've heard a couple of people that I read that when I Googled about being on um, Let's Make a Deal, that people gave up their car because uh, 
they didn't take it because they were afraid of the taxes. And I think with cars, you have to pay the taxes right away, which, oh, I mean, that's such a bummer. Wayne Brady, can't you do anything about that? Don't you have a little bit of like borrow money on taxes? Can you, can you loan me some car tax money? But I didn't win the car. I won these earrings and I remembered them incorrectly. So, cause I'm a jerk. I just got the earrings a few days ago. I've been having a bad goofy day where literally everything in my life was causing me anxiety. Everything from the weather to Megan Markle's interview, uh, that's another show, um, to just, you know, being me, um, which probably means my period's about to come up. Ew. So I open these, I get them and I think, oh, these aren't the earrings that I saw. And what if they're worth less? And the diamonds were honestly so clear that I, I wasn't even sure they were real diamonds. I mean, my diamonds clear, but like, I, this is my engagement ring. So I was like, wow. And you don't normally get to see through a diamond. That's the whole thing. So I, you know, I think I know diamonds. I've actually sold a couple diamonds. That's another story too. Um, so yeah, I make the dumb mistake of calling up the store, which you're not supposed to do as a let's make a deal contestant. I should have known this um, because I, and for some reason, like I get on the phone and I'm all really confident because I want, I want to be like, Hey, these aren't the same diamonds. Like, is the retail value different? Because I'm going to be stuck paying taxes on them. And I want to know, like, could you adjust it if these, since these are different diamonds? Well, I make the mistake of asking for the owner and they're like, what's this about? His name's Dan. I think it's Dan. And, you know, this guy's a jeweler, like he custom makes engagement rings. So he gets on the phone and for some reason, cause I've been on speaker and my fiance is listening and I get really nervous. And sometimes when I get nervous is when I'm like, I sound like such a douche. And so I sort of stumbled through. I said, Oh, you know, I just want to say, thank you. Your diamonds are so beautiful. I just won the earrings, but they're not the same earrings, I think. And I'm just wondering what the retail value is because of the taxes, but I'm being very, like, I'm just kind of rambling like most of my life and he has no idea what I'm saying. Like maybe he does. He's also annoyed. Like, and he goes, I don't know what you're asking me, what you want me to do. And truly, I didn't know what I was asking him on a certain level because I, I really just wanted him to say like, yeah, they're worth this much, or let me give you a different evaluation, or I'll give you the money, or I'll give you less money, or I don't know, dude. I don't know what I wanted. That's why I picked up the phone, and all I could think about were the taxes, and somehow I thought like he would get on the phone, and I would go, well, shit, can you imagine these taxes? And he'd be like, oh, I didn't realize that, and you know, he would say, do you want to do that? I have no idea, and I like towards the end of the conversation where he's like basically saying I'm rude and I'm being rude back for no reason. I mean, I'm not thinking I'm being rude, but my fiance said I was being rude miles. So I, I, I just was like, well, I'm just trying to ask, you know, what the diamonds or earrings are valued at. And, you know, they're really beautiful, but I'm just stumbling my words. And so he basically is like, Hey, I don't know what you're sad about getting diamond earrings. And it, honestly, like, this is one thing you men, I don't understand you like men don't have a lot of comprehension. Like I'm not saying men are super intelligent, but women tend to say something and dance around the truth. So I think it's pretty obvious. I'm calling to say about the price of the diamonds and i um, sorry, I'm waving my nose off and I'm like, you know, talking about the taxes. So I'm thinking if you're, you know, like a woman, I want you to read my brain of like, hey, I'm really scared about paying these taxes on it. Are they worth it? But I'm asking the jeweler who made them if they're worth it. And yeah, so I'm a dick. Um, and th the phone call ends poorly. And then I write, oh, and then I get, I, I write an apology letter explaining where I'm coming from to the jeweler, which is like, I'm like, I'm sorry that I came off like that. I'm just worried about paying the taxes. So a day later, let's make a deal. The price department contacts me and when they're like, don't contact 
the person that, you know, the retailer that, you know, donated the prize. I thought that they didn't donate the prize that they paid to be on the show, but I guess they give the free prize for free publicity. And that's, I, I, I'm assuming I'm making this up now. So they send me a clip of what I won and it is the exact earrings. Now, I don't know how I pictured three things and these are actually much prettier than the earrings I thought, but now I'm a super jackass. So they also send me an evaluation. The evaluation from concierge diamonds instead of 7,000 is 11,000. So now I don't know if the jewelry place was giving me a break at concierge diamonds or they're like, you know what, <laughs> that, that bitch needs to like, we're going to say that they're worth $11,000. And so now in order for me to keep these lovely diamonds, I have to pay 34% on 11,000. I'm not sure about this. I'm super embarrassed and um, <laughs> I don't know what to say about it other than I'm super embarrassed and it did make me sound like I wasn't grateful, but hi, quarantine COVID. I'm not working as much as I used to. And I'm also like, would I spend, um, would I spend $3,000 just to buy these earrings right now in my life, especially since we have nowhere to wear them. However, I would. I can decide what I'm going to do, wear these every single day to go with my little blingy signature thing, because why wouldn't you wear these? I don't believe in waiting for special occasions to wear things, which means sometimes I'm overdressed a lot. So that's my story. <laughs> ¶¶